Hello everyone and welcome back to SGTV. We're in slightly different surroundings today. We're here with Nick Bundy at his own studios. Dave Savory was unavailable, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we're here with Nick today. So Nick, we've been doing videos about installing consume units and uh, we're gonna do a sit down video now just talking a bit about them. So I wanna ask you, from where you started out to where you are now, how have you seen consumer units develop? So when I first passed, it was 70th edition, plastic boards. Most of the time, well, 99% of the time, it was RCBO split load. Uh, up to present day, everything's metal. 99% of the majority of things that we fit are RCBO boards. Uh, there's a bit more space, there's a lot more thought put into it. We've got tail glands now. Uh, lids don't slide over the top of boards, so you can do side entry. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a big upgrade. Yeah, it's definitely needed. So it might be, Asking the obvious, because most people should know this, but why have we gone from plastic to metal? Plastic to metal is a fire risk. Um, well, I've been out to a few where boards have caught fire, being plastic and compostable. The flames not only escape, the board then melts and also catches fire, certain fire to other stuff. So hence the metal board needs to be enclosed or fire sealed up to contain the fire. It should then extinguish itself, it should do. Uh, but obviously it's just fire, fire yeah. risk. And torque settings apparently is quite a big thing in the reason why they were getting fires in the first place. Yeah. So what, what is the importance of torque settings? So torque settings, especially on the your main tails and your breakers and your neutral bars, um, if you've got anything that's too over-tightening, it's just as bad sometimes as under-tightening. Over-tightening will pierce the cable to a point where it's almost cut it. So it could pull, pull split, out. Yeah. Uh, Under-tightening, you get the vibration and the heat builds up, which will then create the either flames within the fuse board or, or melt the plastic ones. Um, getting that sweet torque setting correct is the difference between a safe, good installation or an unsafe installation, really. And have you come across many when you're either working on a consumer unit or doing an update where you're finding yeah. incorrect torque settings? Yeah, so I've been to, uh, I've done a video on this, a fire board, I went up in someone's garage, and if it was in the house, 100% they would have died. 100% it was that bad. But because it was in the garage, it was contained, uh, we're doing EICRs all the moment, and 99% uh, of the boards I go to, we go around with a torque driver at the end, and either nothing's perfect, it's either too much or too little. Most of the time it's too little. Like, as in you could literally just twist the, the terminal around with your fingers. It's, it's, it's not good, but there was no regulations back to the day. It's only recent times that they've bought torque settings out or torque screwdrivers. So you can sort of let people off with it, but we urge people to go around Sparks, get a torque screwdriver and just tighten everything up really. Yeah, how do you have that conversation with a homeowner or whoever is in the property? Are you saying you, this house could, quite literally burned down if I'm not doing this simple task. <laughs> we try not try to, to, yeah. Like you're taking the... Yeah, no, with pictures, now everything that's online that you can see, you Google it, or there's reasons that customers can easily find out what they're for. Um, we try not to go around scaring people too much. We would just do it as part of the job, go around saying, you know, will we say to people, you know, these, this is the, the worst case scenario that can happen, because it is the worst, because your fuse was set on fire, there's nothing else that really bad can happen after that. But we just say we go around, tighten it up, just check it. And that's why it's good with the regular visits is there over time with AC current as well. They can actually come loose over time. Um, hence why regular checkups, we can go around, retighten it, retest stuff if we need to. So it, that's what the importance of these EICRs are now. Even though they're every five years, it's better than before because before sometimes people have had houses that have never been tested. So Yeah. Do you think that will be introduced to not only rented accommodation for landlords, do you think there'll be any kind of thing for making it every homeowner, every house? <sighs> no. I, I as much as I'd like to say yes, it's the same as gas. You know, I've had a gas boiler fitted when I moved into my property. I've not had it checked once since. I had it serviced because my mate offered, he owed me a favour, so he did it for me. But other than that, I wouldn't have had it done because it's just an expense that you don't really think about until you think worst case scenario again. But if you've not got the money there to do it, then it doesn't get done. Um, I would like to see it. I'd like to say that I've gone to my fuse board since I've moved in and I've tightened everything up. I haven't. And I know I should, but it's just sort of things that I'll put at the bottom of the list. And that's just life, isn't it? <laughs> so what about AFDDs? That's something I keep hearing about more and more. Um, I know there's quite a high expense in that, but yeah. how do you see that going? Uh, so AFDDs, if apprentices are watching, yeah, so what are our, 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 our quark detection devices. So uh, they trip under different conditions compared to an RCB or an MCB. The problem with AFDDs is purely cost and also room as well. So we've had a big chat with, I've had a chat with Dave, Dave's done a few videos on this as well. If you were to get a fully loaded AFDD board, 
like a 12 way one to go in a house, you could spend on the upwards of 1500 pound on the materials alone compared to if we were to fit a normal board, uh, RCBO board, it would be around about maximum 200 pound mark. Um, and it's just a vast difference for you to try and convince a customer that it's what they need. Yeah, when essentially it's, it's easy for an electrician fault finding, but that probably won't be a homeowner exactly. doing it. They just want something that's safe and cheap. Really, yeah, don't they? and then on top of it as well, with certain types of AFDDs, they take up more modules than one. So you go from a 12-way board, it ends up being a 24-way board, and then this 24-way board won't fit into someone's cupboard in domestic property. It's just when they come into effect properly, I think it's only going to be viable in two to three, four years when they've made the technology cheaper and smaller. So you could easily just swap a normal fuse board for a normal fuse board with an AFDD in it. It still only costs you 100, 200 quid more, but you've got the benefits of it fitting like for like. That's the only way I can see it's going to be possible. Everyone's talking about renewable energies at the minute, such as wind, solar, that kind of thing. Yeah. And again, this might be an obvious question for some, but it might not be for others. So if people are installing those kind of things, how does that work with things like power storage and working with your consume unit? Yeah, so the best thing that we try and do when you fit a new fuse board, like anyone fitting a new fuse board, you want to try and leave a couple of spare ways. Always leave more than you. you so there'd be like with. your blank modules. Your blank modules, or you can fit some. Like we do a lot of the time, if we carry spare um, RCBOs on the van. We will put a thirty-two and a twenty in there spare because that's the sort of thing that's going to be used in the future. If it doesn't benefit me, it benefits the next park, which is a good, good thing to do. As well. Yeah, we try and we try and do it. My my stickers on that board, so the next park that comes around, we will see that. Um, so the board needs to be big enough. But equally, at the same time, you need to make sure that. Depending on what you have, the power walls, uh, which is the battery power bank that feeds off certain tariffs at night time or off solar panels or off um, wind turbines. And then again with the EV chargers as well, you need to make sure the fuse board's capable of taking the extra load onto it as well. So there's a few things to take into account with it, but as long as you leave a spare few ways on the board when you fit in the new board, you shouldn't really have a problem. Does it also have some, any kind of impact on going back to your meter if you're producing enough energy to to go back to the grid. Is there any extra things you need on your consumer unit? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've not done that. I'm not I'm I'm pretty sure that it should backfeed itself. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if there's another module they put in, but I've not done anything to do with renewable stuff yet. Like solar or, or power banks. I want to because it is the future. It's just right now like I've just not done it. Yeah. Talking about the future, how do you see consumer units going forward like you said you've already seen quite a change from plastic to metal all sorts of safety features how do you see that going even further forward maybe incorporating some smart home stuff in it as well so you can remotely turn breakers off through apps or you know you can have a double dim board so the lower part is to do with the cat 5 or cat 6 cable uh, you've got timers on there maybe some readings that you can get off instead of the british gas smart home that you can see oh it's using this much energy at this time you can maybe have that incorporated in the board I don't know. It's, it's getting better year by year by year and they're introducing more things. But you do look at other countries, especially in the EU, um, in France, their fuse boards and the stuff they have in it are so far forward than ours are, it's almost like we're lacking a little bit. How do you mean? What sort of things? I can't tell you specifically, but the, the, the timers in it, the, the, the different, I think it wasn't AFDDs in there. They had the surges already in it, but they just seemed a bit more few years in the future compared to what we are we're only just sort of bringing this stuff in they've already had that um i need to look into it more but i know they're more because jordan did a video there you go jordan did a video comparing it and france absolutely kicked our ass for yeah. it what about price impacts do you have you seen much of a change in prices from when you started to to now and how do you think that might change yeah so when i first started with plastic with split load boards you could pick one up i mean it would never be being huge specials but um, let's say I went to the wholesaler, I could get myself a Proteus one. Uh, plastic split load, you could spend up to a hundred pound on one, fit that, no problem at all. Nowadays, you got the metal one, I only fit RCBO boards with the surge, and then on top of it as well, you got the tail glands and everything else to go with it. You could easily spend two, maybe three times as much more money on that. Well, we could still go and get split load boards because they're still a late legal, well, they're still legal to fit at the moment. Um, but I just think, in my personal opinion, I'd rather fit the best stuff that we can afford, that a customer can afford. Obviously, if they wanted a new board and they're going, I need the cheapest stuff, well, we will find the best cheapest stuff we can to fit them. But 
99% of the time it's RCBOs. You mentioned surge protection. How come, again, this might sound silly, but are you fitting them more now for a certain reason? Is that something that's happening more and more? Um, with the reg change that came in and the calculations that you need to do towards it, 99% of the time they don't need it. Um, but we find Belt as, and good practice, kind of thing. Yeah, as good practice, uh, we will just fit them with the board because there's a few things now, same as the RCBO boards and the split load boards, it's going to become regulations very soon that they will become mandatory and that you won't be able to fit split load boards. I'm not absolutely sure of it. <clears throat> and it's the same thing with the SPDs. It's going to come to a point where SPDs will have to be fit in fuse boards. And it probably will in 10, 15 years' time. The AFDDs will be the same. But I'd rather, now I can. I'd rather get ahead of the curve, fit some stuff that's higher standard than it should be. It gives me better confidence in the board we're fitting as well. And the homeowner doesn't have to go and have the board changed in 10 years where someone does an ICO and go, oh, it's 18th edition, not 19th. But hopefully, we should have put the stuff in there yeah. beforehand. You mentioned RCB, RCBOs. RCBOs, yeah. So do you think we should be... How do you feel about them? I think we should be fitting them standard. I, I don't think many sparks should be fitting RCD boards. There's nothing wrong with it in the sense of regulation-wise, but the selectivity between circuits of if your upstairs lighting circuit trips, you end up taking half the house out, or if sometimes the whole house, if it's one RCD, rather than RCBO board, if something trips, it's only that circuit, so you'll be able to re remain power. Uh, I do personally think it's the way forward and the way it should be, but I see the reasons why people still fit the others. Yeah. So we're going to have a look at some of the new consumer units we're doing yeah. at Click, which is the Elucian range. So we'll get some of them out on the table and have a little look. Yeah, man. What's your thoughts initially, Nick, once we've, uh, now we've got this opened? From visually outside, loads of nice knockouts, all in the right places. The tail's gland, the entry points on the top, the bottom, the rear entry at the back, and the square ones, the grommet strip that comes with it, and on top of that, in that packet, you've got the blanks that come with it, perfect. And on top of that, the buzz bar, and you've got the little cap ends that go on the buzz bar as well, that covers it up. Um, yeah, visually first inspection, it looks nice. Uh, it's it's a nice shade of white, um, which makes a difference sometimes. And, uh, and then on top of it, the sticker sheet as well, which I've got one, you've got one. Uh, it's appealing to the eye, because that does make a difference. You get some sticker sheets that are terrible. Um, nice colors, it's big, it's good fun. You've got the right um, symbols for the right new technology, you know, the solar, you've got the underfloor heating. Um, and also, another thing that I like is you've got some spare stickers that you can actually draw on if you wanted to. So, yeah, it's nice. How about inside? So, what, which one we've got here then? So, that's the 12-way uh, but a 10-way usable uh, RCBO board. So, this is the uh, combination board, is it? Yeah, so here at Click, we're calling it the combination board. Other Sparkies might know it as... It's just an RCBO board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you've got... Uh, I'll put it on here so you guys can see. You've got the tails clamp on the top of the 100 amp uh, main switch. Nice big numbers and letters above on the earth and neutral block. Backed off screws uh, allow the screws not to come out all the way, especially in transit or I've had it before where you've undoing it a bit too much and it drops out. Uh, that's a nice cool feature. On top of it, you've got the screw, uh, the uh, picture in the back as well, picture sticker in the back. Uh, it has the torque settings for the MCBs, the RCDs and main tails. So that's like what we were talking about earlier in the video, talking about how important the torque settings are. Exactly. And a lot of other manufacturers will actually put it on the back of uh, the, the cover itself. So if you're, you know, so if you're in here yeah. and you're talking, you can vis physically see straight in at what it needs to be. And obviously, it's a key feature now. Where everything has to have a correct torque setting, and it's nice to see on that. Um, obviously, you've got the blanks that we've said before that would just clip in, rather than the normal pushy ones or ones that slide into the lid. Um, but yeah, overall, it's it's there's loads of room to make off because we've not mentioned as well the RCBOs are actually miniature size yeah. as well which gives you a lot of room to make off nice and neat in the top of the board. So, uh, yeah, loads of cool little key features. Um, it's a nice, neat, little, tidy board. Yeah. And part of the Lucian range, you've also got the straightway combination. You've got the split load, split load of surge protection and the garage consume units, right. all in various sizes. Uh, let's talk about the devices themselves, the protection devices. Okay. Yeah, so you've got what's in here is a main switch. You've got the blanks there, the clicking blanks. You've got uh, surge protective devices, SPDs, you've got RCDs, you've got MCBs, you've got RCBOs. Uh, so it's got the, the range of all them as well, all the different types. 
So it's anything you need, as in any size of these boards, because they come full range of sizes as well for all, all you need to do in different types of installation. So based on the kind of work you do day to day, domestic through to commercial, yeah. would you say anything that you need to do? These boards can do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so obviously I'm mainly domestic. We would normally fit 12 to 14 way boards, allow them a couple of extra blanks like we said earlier for future. Um, we normally fit the RCBO boards, so be this one, a few extra ways, maybe a few spare blanks in it. And away we go, yeah. Great, great little board for it. Yeah. Let's talk about the packaging, actually. I know one thing we, we like to do at Click is make sure everything looks good, make sure it's modern and nice and bright. Nice and clean. Yeah, clean, like the white, like the orange, so eye catching compared to other brands. Be able to spot this on the whole side of shelves. Exactly. And it's clearly on the side. So the box for this one is a 14 way split load board with SPD. Nice big right on the side. That's it. Cool. So thumbs up from you then, Nick, for these. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. There you go. Right, thanks for coming on again, Nick. Cheers, mate. Hope you've enjoyed this video on Consume Units here at SGTV in the uh, Nick Bundy studio. The Bundy bunker, there yeah. you go. Bundy bunker. That's <laughs> a bit scary. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> right, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.